In today's chess video, we we'll learn one of the most crashing openings for white, the Vienna. I'll also show you some match-winning tricks and traps in this opening. But before starting off, I would like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. All right, we start with e4, and then e5 is the most common response. And now we'll play not knight f3, but one of the lesser popular moves, knight to c3. This is what we call the Vienna opening. From here, black mainly goes for this or this. These are by far two of the most common responses you will see. Let's look at knight f6 first. Now here we'll go for the Vienna gambit, which starts with the move f4. You might find this risky, but it's absolutely fine. Now most players would take, and here we have the deadly move pawn to e5. Funnily enough, this knight has no safe squares left. He's forced to go back, and now we have to be careful about this queen h4 threat. So simply develop this knight, and you're already in a great position. But let me show you a cool little trap. From here, the best and the most obvious response is d6, attacking the center and opening up this diagonal for the bishop. We'll go with d4, adding another defender. He takes, and now we won't take back. Instead, just check with the bishop. Blocking with the pawn is quite obvious, and we'll just slide back to c4. Black continues to take, and we are down three pawns. Plus, this knight is also under attack. But still, we'll completely ignore this threat and bring out the bishop. Now, if he tries to be greedy and takes the knight. Then he's gone. Let me show you how. We start with bishop f7 check. It's a bishop sacrifice. If he takes, then he loses the queen. And if he doesn't, can you now find the winning move? If you're thinking of bishop g5 check, that won't work as the knight can simply come in between. Therefore, the best move in this position is queen e2 check. Going here won't make sense as the king will be exposed. And moving to d7 or blocking with the bishop results in an immediate checkmate. So basically. Taking the bishop seems the best response, but even then you have this brilliant knight e5 check. If king goes to the e file, knight c6 wins the queen due to this discovered check. So king f6 is forced, and now you have this absolutely stunning bishop g5 check. If the king moves away, the queen is finished, and even if he takes, you have this beautiful family fork, and again the Swede is gone. In fact, in a few moves, you should be able to checkmate him easily. Okay, now let's look at another amazing trap. Sometimes in this position, instead of retreating his knight, your opponent can try to act a little over smart by playing queen e7 and not letting this pawn move. So what do you do now? Yes, just play queen e2 and unpin the pawn. The good thing is that we have it protected, so he cannot take with the queen. Therefore, he's forced to move back. Again, you need to take care of this queen h4 check. So just develop the knight, and it's covered. What next? As you can see, black's pieces are all cramped up, and the main problem is this e pawn. So to get rid of it, the most popular responses you will see are d6 and knight c6. Let's look at them one by one. If d6, then you have the absolutely killer move, knight to d5. We are hitting the queen and also threatening this deadly check. So queen e6 is clearly losing for black. Therefore, in most cases, you will see queen d7 or d8. It doesn't really matter whatever he plays because you have this discovered check lined up. But a simpler way is to attack right away by taking this pawn. The rook is in danger, so he takes with the queen, and ultimately you have this discovered check. And again, the queen is out of the board. Guys, come on! This trick definitely deserves a thumbs up. So smash that like button below this video right now. Okay, now what if here instead of d6 he plays knight c6? Well, then we have d4, strengthening the center and striking this pawn. You can pick it up if he doesn't defend, and whenever he moves this pawn. Attack with the knight in the same way, and as we saw earlier, that's completely winning for white. Okay, let's go back. Now here we just saw how black is completely losing after he accepts the gambit. What if he declines and defends with either d6 or knight c6? Let's look at knight c6 first. This is also not that great because after takes takes, we attack the knight, push him back, then threaten the other knight, push it back as well, develop and stop queen h4 check. We'll try to open up the center, but we'll continue to develop. Don't worry about these pawns. Just activate all your pieces and castle on the king side. Make use of this open f file and target the king with your entire army. Okay, so that was knight c6. Now, what if he declines with d6? The ideas are quite similar. First, bring out the knight, attack the center. If he gets the other knight out, we can pin it with our bishop. Then open up this diagonal, eliminate the knight, put pressure on the center. Eventually, you can castle and attack along the f file. Long term, this is a really good position to play as white. All right, there is one move which actually keeps black in the game, 
and that is declining the gambit with d5. This move does not come naturally and I can guarantee that anyone who has not studied this will never play this. Anyway, this is the main line and after you take, he can recapture with the knight because it is defended by the pawn. From here, you can play knight f3 to stop this check, but an even better option would be queen to f3. This check is still defended and most likely your opponent will exchange the knights. There could be many different moves from here, but the main idea is to get the bishops out, maybe castle on the queen side and attack with your rooks along these open files. So even if black plays this perfectly, the game is still in the balance. Okay, so that was the Vienna gambit after black plays knight f6. Now what if instead of this, he plays knight c6? Well, I'll show you some mind boggling tricks for this as well. But before that, I would like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. When you're feeling low and your everyday life is being affected, it is very important to take the help of an expert. Well, BetterHelp has over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, just answer a few questions about your feelings and preferences and BetterHelp will match you to a suitable professional therapist. You can connect with your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions over text, phone or video calls however you're comfortable. And if required, you can even change your therapist at no additional charge. That makes BetterHelp so much more convenient and affordable than traditional offline therapy. So basically, BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life right now. All you need to do is sign up with this link, betterhelp.com slash chess talk. That's better, H-E-L-P, and you'll get 10% off on your first month. Link is in the description box below, so go and check it out. All right, e4, e5, knight c3, and now instead of this knight, black plays knight c6. What do you play here? If you try f4 now, after black takes, this queen check is a threat right away. Even if you defend with the knight, black has g5 and things start to get a little uncomfortable on the king side. So f4 is not as good as we saw in the earlier variation. Therefore, after knight c6, I would suggest you play a normal development move like bishop c4. You might be wondering why not develop this knight first? Well, in many of these variations, we might want to quickly play d3 or f4 to exchange these pawns and take advantage of the f file. So it's better to keep all options open for the future. Therefore, bring out the bishop and now you can anytime play d3 or f4. Okay, now many players will just try to copy you with bishop c5. An extraordinary move you can play here is queen to g4, striking this pawn. Most players here would respond with queen f6, defending the pawn and at the same time hitting f2. If you're thinking of saving this pawn, just forget it because you have a much better move and that is knight to d5. Even if he takes, there's not much he can do after this check. And yeah, this is not a checkmate. He just loses the queen. So basically, there is no good way for him to follow up on this attack. Plus, we are threatening to pick up both these pawns and potentially both these rooks as well. So it's not that easy to handle. Many players try d6, but then you can take on g7. You don't even need to capture this rook immediately. Just hit the queen with your knight. If he takes it, attack with your rook. He can't simply move away because we are just killing it. We'll go all in, just continue giving checks. And it's just a matter of time before we deliver a smashing checkmate. Okay, in this position, even if he doesn't take the knight, he's still in deep trouble because of all these different attacks. Going back in this position to avoid this capture, even if you play something like g6 or even king f8, you can still attack the queen and believe it or not, the queen has no safe squares. He's forced to move to d4, we box it in and the queen is actually trapped in the middle of the board. Eventually you can play c3 and gobble up the queen. This knight c7 threat still remains and at some point you can move the queen and rook here and attack the king via f7. All in all, this is a dream game to play as white. Alright, in this position, many players might also try knight f6 with the idea of attacking the queen. But then you have this beautiful check and again, black is struggling to hold on to this game. Okay, now let's go all the way back. Bishop c4, bishop c5, queen g4. And here we looked at the most popular response, that is queen to f6. Instead of this, if he tries g6, then there is one thing you need to be careful about. And that is the move d5, hitting the queen and the bishop. Therefore, it's important you move the queen out of the firing line, maintaining pressure on the king side. After that, you can continue by bringing out the knight like this. This prevents knight d4. There's also this interesting line where after d3, d6, you can trap the knight. If he defends with the king, you bring in another attacker and basically the knight is gone. Okay, so that was the copycat variation where black tries to mimic you with bishop c5. 
but the most common response is actually knight f6 because obviously everyone is taught to develop their knights before the bishops. Now here again, f4 or any other random move isn't that great because black has this sneaky little idea of knight takes on e4. The point is that after this capture, he has d5 and black is actually better. So going back in this variation, before making any other move, it is very important to secure this pawn to prevent this knight e4 idea. Therefore, d3 is a good option. Bishop c5 is common and now if you want, you can play f4. If he takes, you recapture and if he defends, you increase the pressure in the center. In fact, there's a cool little trap here after knight g4. He's thinking of poking our queen and rook, but we'll completely ignore that and counter attack in the same way. If he goes for it, then we have the stunning move, queen h5 and its curtains for black. g6 is met with this check and then we'll be pouncing on the king from all directions. Our queen will get in this way and white is completely winning from here. Going back, in this position, instead of the immediate poke, if he castles and goes for the safety first approach, we'll disconnect the support of the knight. And now if he tries the same thing, this move still works because you're threatening from both directions. h6 is almost forced and then you open up the king, eliminate the rook and finally push f6. We have all these different kinds of mating ideas. You can go this way or if the queen captures, you can mate him from the top or even bring in this bishop to finish him off. Basically, black is busted if he tries knight g4. But what if he tries bishop g4? Well, the main move you need to remember here is knight to a4. We want to exchange of these pieces. And if this knight jumps in, attack it with c3. Let him exchange. It's okay to have these double pawns because we'll castle on the queen side and use this open file for the rook. After the dust settles, we end up with good central control and a much better position. So those were the main variations of the Vienna. All right, so it's puzzle time. In this position, it is white's turn and you need to find the best move for white. Share your answers in the comments. Let's see how many of you get this right. Guys, do subscribe to the channel and I shall see you in the next one.